with Bitcoin, it is essential to have a long-term perspective and not just a time horizon measured in a, a couple years or even looking in terms of halvings. I think to really understand the value proposition of Bitcoin and to be able to conceptualize just how much of an opportunity it still is, you have to look at Bitcoin in terms of decades and even in terms of uh, generations. If you are currently playing in the the shitcoin casino, you are probably in thinking in terms of today. You, you may be even looking at the performance of your shitcoins uh, on a hourly basis. This is extremely dangerous. And that applies to Bitcoin as well. It's, it's, it is dangerous to uh, judge Bitcoin's performance on a, on a daily basis, uh, if, if not even a minute-to-minute -minute basis, uh, as some people do. Uh, it's, it's especially dangerous when the underlying asset is, is essentially just casino chips. However, what I'm getting at is the problem here it is the equivalent of what fighter pilots call target fixation. So back in one of the world wars, I forget which one, they figured out that pilots that were getting shot down quickly, the problem that they were having was target fixation. And what this phenomenon was, it, it was pilots would lock in, they would have tunnel vision on one target and they would chase that one target without considering the wider scope of the battlefield without considering what was happening around them uh, without zooming out uh, without having that that grander perspective and considering okay I can't just look at this one target right now I have to consider everything around me and I have to consider what is ha going to happen uh, you know many moves in advance right and the the aces fighter aces are the ones who do not have target fixation. They do not fixate on one target in the immediate moment. They they have a uh, a big picture concept of what is occurring in the battle space. And I think the same needs to apply in in investing in general, yes, but in, in particular with Bitcoin. Uh, and if you are playing the shitcoin casino, I mean, you have to recognize that what you are doing, you have target fixation, extreme target fixation. You are looking at the performance of, of one asset without any concept of, okay, what is going to be the value of this asset in 30 years? You, you see what I'm saying? You're, if you are playing in the shitcoin casino, you have a very narrow and short-term perspective. And I don't mean that as an insult. It, that is just the nature of the game. That is the nature of this casino. If you play in the casino, you, you basically have to have a extremely short-term perspective because these shitcoins pump and they dump. And if you don't get out in time, if you're not watching it on a hourly basis or even a minute to minute basis you're going to get wrecked so i'm not saying it as an insult i'm not personally insulting you if you play in this casino i'm saying that the problem is you have to recognize that you have this target fixation you have this extremely short term uh time horizon that you're dealing with when the real opportunity is to zoom out from the minute to minute hour to hour performance of these shitcoins zoom out and look at the grand perspective these shitcoins are not going to exist in 30 years bitcoin will now we're looking not at uh, a very narrow short-term uh, perspective now we're starting to look at what is the big picture here what is what is the real game that is being played because i don't want to gamble in a casino because this is my life savings. 
that I'm managing. This is not gambling money. I have my life savings in Bitcoin. And to that extent, I, I need to zoom out and I need to rationally and um, honestly assess wh what is the real potential here in the long term. So in that regard, I have a little exercise for us to do. We are going to zoom out and look at Bitcoin from the perspective of future decades. And the metric that we are going to use to measure uh, or, or, or to assess what Bitcoin's value is going to be in the future is the halvings and specifically the block reward. So on average, uh, every block, uh, a block takes 10 minutes to be mined on average. So every 10 minutes on average, uh, there is a, a block reward. It is rewarded to the miners. And in the beginning, the, the first halving period, the first four years of Bitcoin's existence, every 10 minutes on average, there was 50 Bitcoin that were printed and uh, rewarded to miners. And by the end of this halving period, 50% of all Bitcoin had been mined. And then we, you can look at the chart here and you can see uh, in, the, in the next halving from 2012 to 2016, there was, it was halved. It, it, you had 25 Bitcoin that were uh, provided to miners as uh, incentive to uh, secure the network. Now, we are currently in uh, cycle four, and the block reward is 6.25 Bitcoin every 10 minutes on average. In the next cycle, in 2024, the block reward is going to be cut in half to just over three. Now, I could keep on going, but you can see on the chart here. But the point I want to emphasize here is that the implications of just what a block reward is and look at it from this perspective right now on every 10 minutes on average all the miners in the world are in competition for this reward for just over six bitcoin all the hash power all the electricity that is spent all the capital invested the entire world, uh, miners all over the world are competing for just over six Bitcoin as a reward, plus mining fees. Yes, that is true. But but right now, the 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 block reward is uh, still a substantial portion of of uh, compensation for the miners. So it's it's very interesting to think that the entire world all the miners in the world are in competition for just six bitcoin every 10 minutes but where things get really interesting is when we look a little further into the future so let's not think in terms of next year or uh, even the next having but let's say uh let's look 20 years into the future let's look at 2040 what is the block reward in 2040? Well, it's uh, basically a fifth of a Bitcoin. 0 0.19. Uh, every 10 minutes on average is the block reward. That's, that's a lot less than six Bitcoin. Now, uh, a lot of people, I mean, if you are... If you only recently got into Bitcoin and, and you're just you you make a, an average amount of money, six Bitcoin is is already well out of your uh, your reach. You're not going to be able to ever buy six Bitcoin. But uh, 0.2 Bitcoin is absolutely achievable, even by uh, someone of more modest means who who is kind of uh, comparatively late into Bitcoin by today's standards. A fifth of a Bitcoin is, is definitely achievable. And in 2040, it's pretty interesting to think that the entire world, all the miners in the world, will be competing 
over just a fifth of a Bitcoin as a reward. And not only that, let's look at what are what what percentage of Bitcoin has been mined in 2040 out of the total possible supply of 21 million. By 2040, it's 99.8 percent. By 2040, there is 0.2 percent of uh, remaining Bitcoin to be mined for the rest of history. At least in uh, 2021, w where you know, somewhere between uh, uh, about 94 and 95 percent of Bitcoin have been mined. So there's still a few percent of Bitcoin left, but by the time we get to 2040, it's it's getting to be uh, almost all of all of the supply has already been mined. It is already in in the economy. And there's just this precious little left to be mined, just 0.2%. All the world, all the miners in the world competing every 10 minutes for just a fifth of a Bitcoin. That kind of puts it into perspective. It it indicates just how this the exponential growth of Bitcoin works through the halvings. And how the further we go into the future, the the more the supply just becomes absolutely uh, incredibly constrained because at, even now there's there's at least that uh, a, a little more of an inflation rate than than what what we'll see in in 2040 at least there's a couple more percent of Bitcoin to be mined by 2040 I mean it's basically if you want Bitcoin you have to buy it off of someone who already has it because there's so little supply coming out of the miners that uh, by 2040 it pretty much all is is based on who, who is willing to sell you Bitcoin the miners themselves are, are not going to be a source of new supply by 2040 and even now I mean every 10 minutes they, they they're a source of six Bitcoin coming into the market but even that's not a lot, but by 2040, wow, that it starts to get to be, you know, a, a lot less. And you can see what this will do to the price, because with no new supply coming out of the market, or such a, a small amount, just a fifth of a Bitcoin every 10 minutes, this this is uh, you want to talk about a an asset that has no elasticity. Well, this is it. This is the most inelastic asset the world has ever seen. It's 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 pretty crazy, and we're only in 2040. This this is 20 years from now. Things get even crazier when we look further into the future. So let's go ahead another 20 years. Uh, let's go to 2060. By the time 2060 rolls around, uh, hopefully I'm still alive, and if I am, I'll be an old man. But uh, what will the block reward be like when I'm an old man? Well, once we get to 2060, looking at the block reward in terms of Bitcoin units really doesn't even make sense anymore. It, it makes more sense to look at it for, in terms of Satoshis because it the block reward every 10 minutes on average in 2060 will be 0. 006 Bitcoin less than a percent of a single Bitcoin so in 2040 at least there is a fifth of a Bitcoin there is uh, you know a 20 percent of a Bitcoin being fed into uh, as supply into the market by the time I'm, I'm an old man that's it's less than a percent it is 600,000 sats the entire world, all the miners in the world, competing for 600,000 sats. How many have been mined at this point in 2060? 99.993%. Basically all of it. Right? Less than a basis point remaining to be mined. What does this say about what 
the value of Bitcoin will be when I'm an old man. Because why in, in 2060, why would miners be expending electricity and, and spending money on, on capital costs and, and maintenance uh, of servers and, and whatever miners look like in, uh, in 40 years? Why are they spending all that energy and investing that capital for a block reward of 600,000 sats? I mean, today, the fiat value of 600,000 sats is, is what, 350 bucks? Why is the whole world in competition for $350 worth of, of sats in 2060? Well, there, there is the minor fees that they'll be getting as well, but that simply implies that there's enough people using the Bitcoin network that the combination of this 600,000 sats as a reward every 10 minutes on average plus mining fees is enough to justify whatever amount of electricity they are spending in, in 2060. Let's look at it another way. What is the current fiat value of the block reward? Well, 6.25 Bitcoin every 10 minutes on average, that comes up to about $375,000 or so. Yet, the block reward in 2060, the current fiat value of it is like $360. That's an interesting little coincidence, isn't it? Because we're looking at orders of magnitude. $360 compared to $375,000 today. That's a 1,000x in the next 40 years. A 1,000x of the value of the block award. Well, I think you can see what I'm getting at here. In 2060, the block award is not going to have an equivalent fiat value of $360. It's more likely that the 600,000 sats in 2060 will have a value more like $400,000 or the equivalent of it because there of course will not be fiat dollars in 2060. So all of this is to say that you need to stop having uh, a, this short-term fixation on, uh, on price and think about the long term because if you are I like to use the example if you're just a a humble dishwasher you can absolutely afford to stack 600,000 sats it'll cost you a few hundred dollars let's say let's call it four hundred dollars and by the time you're an old man or an old woman in 2060 what will those 600,000 sats be worth if the entire world, all the miners in the world, every 10 minutes are competing over 600,000 sats? I can guarantee you that there, there is a binary answer to this. It is either or. There is two possible outcomes. In 2060, either the Bitcoin network will have failed, it will be dead, and have gone to zero. It will have been destroyed. And your 600,000 sats that you bought for $400 will be worth nothing in 2060. That is option number one. The only other option, though, is that the Bitcoin network survived, and because it did, those 600,000 sats are worth exponentially more than they are now because in 2060 the whole world will be competing all the energy of the Bitcoin network will be in competition at war to earn 600,000 sats 
And can you imagine just how much energy that will be 40 years from now? I can't even comprehend it. And yes, 40 years from now, when 99.99% .99 of Bitcoin has been mined, and the block reward has fallen to 600,000 sats every 10 minutes, yes, the miners will be relying upon fees uh, for most of their... Uh, to cover most of their expenses and to make a profit, yes. But that's the point is that if Bitcoin still exists in 2060, uh, it implies that the network succeeded, that Bitcoin survived, and uh, its survival in 2060 implies, and in fact necessitates, that it has grown exponentially. That's why I say it is, it, it is a binary... Uh, outcome here in 2060 when I'm an old man Bitcoin either long ago failed or it is everything by 2060 either Bitcoin failed and 600,000 sats is worth nothing or hyper Bitcoinization occurred and the 600,000 sats that you bought for $370 is worth I don't know. I, I have no idea. I, I don't even think that we can comprehend just how much uh, hash power will be behind the Bitcoin network in 40 years. I don't think our, our puny brains are not capable of, of comprehending just how vast the, the Bitcoin mining operations around the world will be. And to think of all that hash power, all those computers, all that electricity, all that energy, all that capital, 40 years from now, in competition for 600,000 sats, and you can buy 600,000 sats for $400 right now? Why do you need shit coins? You don't. Like, th this is the opportunity. You don't need shit coins. You just need to diligently stack sats because, you know, one day the whole world will be competing for a block reward that a dishwasher today can afford with just uh, a, a, a couple months of savings. Now, in conclusion, let's look a little further into the future. Let's look at... 2100 next century now we're thinking in terms of generations not just a single lifetime what is the block reward in 2100 it's just 596 sats 99.9999 plus percent of the bitcoin ever to exist for all eternity will have already been mined. What about 2136? Again, now we're thinking intergenerationally here. We're thinking in terms of uh, the implications of Bitcoin as it pertains to generational wealth. In 2136, what will the block reward be? It will be one sat. The whole world competing every 10 minutes for a single sat. If Bitcoin exists in 2136, just entertain that notion for a moment. If it does exist, what will the value of a single block reward be? which in 2136 will only be one sat. What will the value of a single sat be? This is a question that it, it's important to ask now, not for your own benefit, but perhaps for the benefit of your descendants.